Hello, welcome to this lesson in Calculus 1 Limits. Here we're going to tackle the concept of the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit. And I've actually kind of hinted about this to you several times before, but we're going to formalize what these concepts really are. Uh, and depending on the book that you're using and the teacher that you're using, you may have learned about this a little bit earlier in the study of limits, but I like to present it here because we have such a good example base to choose from, it makes it very easy. Basically, remember I told you, if you have a limit here, I told you, hey, we can make a table of values and approach that value from, uh, you know, from one side and see where the limit converges and what it is. Okay, so when we make our table, a lot of times when we were approaching zero, for instance, I was getting closer and closer to zero from one side. Okay, but that was all under the assumption that all of those really simple functions I was giving you, they were all smooth and continuous. And we've been talking about that a lot. So you know that it really doesn't matter if you have a very smooth curve, if you approach from the bottom and go towards zero, for instance, or if you approach from the top going down back towards zero. And when we were doing all of those problems a long time ago, I was mostly doing those charts when we were doing a lot of the tables. I was doing the tables from one side because I knew that all of those functions were smooth and continuous and it didn't matter. There was no jumps or anything, any kind of weird triangular breaks or jumps or discontinuous jumps in those functions. So it doesn't really matter if you start walking toward the limit from this side or walking toward the limit from this side. Well now we're going to learn about left and right hand limits and you're going to find out when it will actually matter if you walk from the left or walk from the right. So let's take a simple example and kind of pull all this together. When we walk from the left, it's called a left-hand limit. It's very simple to understand. Basically, if it's a left-hand limit, what you say is the limit of f of x is equal to L as x approaches A, but to signify that you're walking from the left, like going this way, you put a little minus sign. It's like a little exponent right above the, what you're approaching. And you put a little minus sign. And all that means is a mental reminder telling you that as I'm walking toward the, the uh, value of A to find what the limit is, I'm walking from the left. Okay, So this is something I'll kind of circle. That's what that means. All right, now you might guess then that a right-hand limit is very similar. A right-hand limit is very similar. It's, a, it's basically the same sort of thing, but you're walking from the other side. So you might have the limit of f of x is going to be some limit l. x approaching a, but now I'm not walking this way. I'm walking from the right-hand side, so I put a little plus sign there. So you need to make sure you understand what that is. If you ever see a, plus, a little plus or a little minus sign there, it's basically just telling you which way you walk. So the way I remember it is if you see a plus sign there, it's on the kind of on the right hand side walking towards the value that I care about. If you see a negative sign, it's walking from the left. So if you think about like a coordinate system with x, x being negative this way and positive to the right. If you see a little positive side, you're kind of walking from that way. And if you see a negative sign, you're walking from the opposite direction. So in pictures, what this might look like for a left hand limit, a real simple left hand limit, like nothing fancy or anything. If you have x and f of x, Let's say the function that I'm actually interested in looks something like this. And if I'm approaching, let's say, let's say I'm going to take the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of the function x squared, because this is a parabola, what is that going to equal? Well, if this is 1 and this is 2, okay, then what's going to happen? Well, the limit, I'm going to be walking from the left towards the value 2. I'm going to find what this value is over here. And you know that 2 squared is 4, so this value here is 4. So 